to bring in a Daytona 500 winner. Spent 16 years full-time in the Cup Series as well. And now you can see him on NASCAR on Fox. We're bringing in Jamie McMurray right now. And we're talking a little bit about blocking. Now, earlier in the show, Jamie, Denny Hamlin said there was a 99% chance when you're throwing those big blocks that it's just not going to work out. Are you giving it the same percentage or do you have a different viewpoint on blocking? Yeah, I, I would say it just depends on the the circumstances. I you know, Talladega is a lot harder to to do the second block at because of how wide the track is. I think Daytona it's a little bit easier. And and I think it also it just depends on how you know how far you had to go in, in both directions. Um the one thing that stuck out to me when when I watched on Sunday is I mean, Brad almost like you know, Brad made two moves as well and and when he moved back down in front of Noah, he it, it looked to me like they almost touched as well. Like it was it was really close. And then obviously McDowell was, was even closer. Um, but I, you know the the difference in the two is that Brad was a little less aggressive and how fast he came back down the track. And I don't know, like I would I wanted to I knew McDowell was on the show and I wanted to hear what he said because like when you, you know, it's so easy to watch those back over and over and pick it apart, but it just looked like McDowell, McDowell didn't react quick enough to the second block. It, it seemed like Brad moved down and then like there was a little hesitation and it got him behind. Yeah, Michael McDowell did kind of say that there were a lot of things that he would do differently. He didn't want to share those to give away any secrets, of course, but from an analysis perspective, from what you were watching, what do you think he could have done different? Well, in hindsight, it's really easy, right? You don't throw the second block, or if, if you do, you make sure you get down in front of them. I, I I listened to Denny earlier this week talk about, and and he's right, but I, I feel like it's so hard for Denny to evaluate McDowell's situation because Denny's already won a couple of races, and he he makes the playoffs every year, where M- McDowell's in, in a little a completely different situation. Um, and so I, I think, it, you know, in, in hindsight, he obviously shouldn't have done the second block and, and hoped – that they could maybe race back to the start finish line. I, I still don't think McDowell's going to win though. I mean, Tyler had a pretty big run and and the odds of Tyler continuing to to push McDowell when when they, you know, when he got back down in front of him, I think are zero because he had some momentum. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't uh I mean, I hate it for McDowell because that, that was a great story, but I I don't I mean, I I think he did the right thing for his situation and and where he's at. You were shaking your head, but then you nodded. Not, yeah, I mean, I agree. <laughs> I mean, he has to do whatever he can at that point. <clears throat> but you know, I, I don't think I don't think he liked his odds of us getting beside him um, and, and getting by him because I do think if Brad gets beside him, Noah pushes us through, and I think the best thing that can happen for Michael at that point is get Tyler's help or Noah and Brad get to racing side by side, and maybe get make contact or something. But like Jamie made a really good point about. Denny's scenario is way different than Michael's. Um, you know, Michael's de- he's in desperation mode. You know, he's in desperation mode at that point, and he was willing to do what it took. You know, and and um, like the thing that did stand out to me, like I thought we had him on the second move because the gap, the amount of racetrack that we were covering, you just and the gap between Michael and Brad at that point, like. There's no way Michael could have seen Brad in his mirror still because Brad was way down at the bottom. And mm-hmm. when Michael was coming back down, I mean, I literally had time to think to myself, like, okay, he's not going to come all the way down in front of us. How are we going to defend this 10? Like, my mind was already switching to Noah. And when Michael came all the way down, I was like, oh, you know, like, oh, gosh. And at yeah. that point, I don't, even, I don't even know what I said at that point. Um, Brad checked up a little bit, and Tyler got a run. And I remember telling Brad, no caution, keep going. And um, But I literally had time to think, um, you can't. Daytona is so narrow, you don't have time to make those moves. And it's definitely, you can definitely counter move at Daytona a little bit quicker. But that second move at Talladega covering that much racetrack, man, I, like it, it takes a long time to get. It doesn't seem like a long time, mm-hmm. but in the call, like when you're watching it and spotting it, like you're literally like, there's no way he's going all the way back down. And then, oh, he is. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. And then the big one. But yeah, I, I mean, I agree with the different situations and. I honestly think if you're in that same scenario, Michael probably tries to make the same same move. Now, if he's on the cusp of the points, he probably maybe he probably tries to race it out and takes that third or fourth or second or whatever and and continues on. But that's not the not the not what happened. Well, I, I think something else that you you have to keep in mind in 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 any type of super speedway track is 
if you find me someone who's successful at those, I, I will point out a lot of wrecks that they've caused because you can't <laughs> continue to have success at that. You can't have success at that type of track without taking a lot of risk. And so, I mean, the situation that McDowell was in, I mean, he he's good at those because he's aggressive. And and I, you know, what you don't know from his perspective is what's happening two or three rows back that is is how quick that run is coming and i always try to compare tell everyone if you've ever merged uh on the the on-ramp on an interstate and you look in your rearview mirror and you're like i think i can make it but i'm not 100 <laughs> percent sure that's that's speedway racing right you you look in your mirror and you you're like i don't i think i can get down in front of them but you don't always know and and i i just feel like that's kind of the easiest way for someone to relate to it because we we do that every day here because we live on the interstate um, but there's, there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of risk taken in all those moves. Yeah. You mentioned kind of the, the art of blocking and a lot of these drivers taking risks. Who, who comes to mind, who just pops up in your mind that that's really good at that on those, on those super speedway races? Yeah. So, I mean, well, Joey Logano is pretty good at, at taking risk, but I heard uh, TJ say something before I came on about, Brad being methodical. I don't know if that's the word you use, but I always use that word to describe Denny. And I would put Brad in that same category of someone who, when when you watch, I don't I don't feel like they're wild. Like there's some like Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's wild, right? I mean, like you're every time you're like you don't know what's gonna happen. But he's good at those because he he takes a chance and he knows how to time out runs. But I would say, like, I mean, I think about Brad and Denny, and I know they've been around for a, a long time. But it's always been that way with those guys. Like I don't, I don't feel like when you watch that you you have to take a deep breath or you're 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 like oh, it's getting ready to wreck. They seem like they're a, a little more calculated in in the moves that they make. In those instances too, when you're analyzing this, I'm sure you probably think back to when you were in the car and, and kind of your mentality. What do you lean on from your experience in the car when you're when you're looking at these guys taking these big risks? Yeah, so I, I would just say that. Throughout, like I got to live a bunch of generations of of cars and rules packages, and even with the same car, when they would change the spoiler, the all of that was different. And and it was always interesting to me whether it was the drivers or the teams, kind of who could figure it out. Uh, just even with spoiler changes, I, one of the years that I won at Talladega, I, I just remember I, I learned like and it's, it would be hard to explain, but I kind of learned how to manipulate the lines. And I, I, when it was happening, I'm like, I can't believe no one else has, has figured out that this, this is kind of what, what works. And then you come to the next race and everyone has figured it out at that point. So it, you know, it, it just, it depends. And I, I've not been in the gen seven car and, and it, it, I would say that watching that race though, and, and TJ would, would, uh, I assume would agree with me. It, it seemed like, like watching that race, Brad could have pushed McDowell way out anytime he wanted, but I felt like Brad was in the best position at the end of the race because he knew that he could he could push him out. Um, and because of how wide Talladega is, I, I mean, you'd want to be the leader hoping that there's a wreck. But if there's not a wreck, I would rather be where Brad was because I think I can beat you back to the start finish line. Yeah, McDowell kind of said he wanted to lead, but you probably think that Brad thought he was in the best spot too. Yeah, I really, knowing that how good we could push and we covered it, a little bit before, but knowing how good we could push, I knew Brad, and I knew, like, when he got on Michael off of turn two, man, he was on him so early, like, before the exit of the corner, and I, I knew Brad knew that he could push him way out. The The bonus of that was is that we brought Noah with us, mm -hmm. and Noah did a – Noah ran a really good race, and knowing that we had the 10 in our pocket, and if we make a move, the 10's going to go with the momentum – Um you know, I, I, I liked, and I, I told you guys earlier, I liked where we were sitting. I knew Brad could get Michael clear and us clear. The 10 was a bonus if that happened. Um, but I, you know, usually at Talladega, um, and the way this racing is, there was no third lane. So I really wasn't overly worried about, you know, the, the three wides when things get really sketchy. Um, but nobody could get running outside. So it was just two by two and those guys aren't, nobody would pull out. So it really wasn't a high, a high probability of a wreck until the dog, you know, the trial at least. And, um, I thought we could get Michael by that point. And, but I, I like, like Jamie said though, I, 
I thought we were in the best position knowing how, you know, knowing Brad could get him clear whenever he wanted and himself. Um, I, I thought we were going to win the race in a three. The other thing that stuck out to me, like when I watched the race is I, I'm assuming that Brad checked up when McDowell pulled down in front of him because that whole row lost all their momentum. And I would say for as upset as McDowell is, I bet you Brad has just dwelled on that since since Sunday, knowing that if he stays in the throttle, even I mean McDowell's gonna get turned anyway, but he lost his momentum and 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 ultimately that's what that's what won Tyler Reddick the race. Yeah, I mean Brad definitely checked up a little. I don't I don't she think he was you for the answer. That was great. <laughs> I don't I mean it's been a tough week. It's been hard. Um I, I I think I turned my phone off Sunday night. It was I was got a lot of messages and I think I turned my phone off. Um that was tough, but I do think I don't think Brad expected Michael to come all the way back to the line because that's just not a normal move that people make. Like you covered, I don't know how many lanes wide Talladega is, seven or eight wide, and you covered he covered almost sixteen lanes of traffic in a, a couple seconds. Um, I didn't think, you know, I don't think Brad expected him to come all the way down there, and when he did, he cracked it just a little bit, and that gave um, you know Tyler enough momentum to get everybody and. It worked out. 